welcome to a new edition of Get On Extra. It is a new year. We have a new panel to bring us into the new year. One regular is BZ, but a very new member of our team is Dave Strelaw. Welcome to the team. Yes, great to make the debut. Great to be here. And it's a big week in a racing for us to have a look forward to. We'll have a look up at the Gold Coast, of course, Ram Week, the big meeting at Geelong that uh, I'm all over form-wise. Yeah, looking forward to Geelong especially. Yes. We will, You just touched on it's a new meeting and there's a lot to look forward to as far as horses that are potentially going to be making that berth into two-year-old races later well, on. Well, we've seen tracks like Cranbourne, Pakenham, uh, Ballarat have Saturday meetings on their own and Geelong is a great racing town. There's a lot of people down there at this time of year so I think it's only fitting that they are getting a Metropolitan meeting. Okay, it's not the Geelong Cup but there's some nice races on the card. Ten races and the two-year-old that you mentioned. In the past this has been on a nondescript Geelong midweek meeting and there has been some two-year-olds that have platformed into the diamond. One of them that won it, including Artorias. The other, which was uh, Jigsaw, come through this race. It's been elevated with a lot of prize money. And looking at the field, they've certainly got the quality they were looking for, Dave. And you were saying that the meeting is something to look forward to. Have you found the meeting a bit of confidence leading into Saturday? Yeah, a little bit. There's a few bets I'm keen to have. When I sort of brought the meetup Racing Australia, you see almost 160 acceptors. You think it's going to be hard work. But once you filter through, a few bets pop up. They look some horse well placed. So that two-year-old race is a cracker. Though so you're going through and you're marking horses as you're doing the form. And each horse, you're looking at their jump out. That can win, that can win, that can win. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that contest. But uh, the features later on look look open races, but ones that I'm keen to have a bet in. And touching on Queensland as well, there's a great yes. meeting up in Queensland. This is the Wave Race Day, so the precursor to head into Saturday, which will be the big Magic Millions Day in a week's time. A lot to look forward to again for the juveniles. Yeah, and a lot of people have already made their way to the Gold Coast. You've already been up there, and Lizzie. And back and forward. <laughs> um, which at this time of year is... Uh, you know, it's an annual holiday, but a working holiday for so many in the industry. And I think it's a good thing that the Magic Millions brand has been expanded into a two-day carnival, Saturday and Saturday. Um, there's a lot of racehorses that are purchased, a lot of people looking for that big prize money. And I know even you've got a, uh, a share in one of the maidens as well, Lizzie. So you've been looking forward to well, that. The fingers crossed. Well, it's $1.7 million on offer on Saturday up in Queensland at the Gold Coast. Of course, they have had the new renovations as well. So look forward to delving into that meeting. We also have got Randwick to look forward to and the Geelong meeting. So it's time to have a look at our early cash. So we're going to kick off Saturday, find a few winners and hopefully BZ, we're going to be doing that at Geelong. Yeah, and I'm going to the two-year-old race and we've sort of referenced that it is a really strong strong event and I think the horse to beat is Stay Focused who there was a little chat that this horse may be heading up to the Gold Coast for a thousand metre two-year-old Colts and Geldings race worth a lot of money next Saturday but Connections have decided to stay here in Victoria and the jump out at Pakenham was really nice from off the speed and then cruise to the line and then they backed it up within seven days had an official trial at Cranbourne and trialled very well up on speed. I think barrier one is going to be an advantage because with the rail being back in the true position at Geelong on a dry track, I don't think there's going to be too many horses that are going to want to leave the fence. And Dave, having that advantage with a juvenile can bounce out, can be either in front or just behind the speed. I thought it was the one to beat. Yeah, well, he's got the options from that draw, yeah. doesn't he? Because there is some speed that goes forward. I probably expect him to to tag on the back of the speed. I thought the one for the Freedman threw the same jump out Mark at Cranbourne. Mark Dell got the blinkers on at Flemington and rolled forward. Probably set the tempo and could run well, but yeah, he's going to get that nice running behind them. Stay focused. So so oh, what do you think of... I've gone in the two-year-old yes. race as well. I've gone with Trunk. I just love that straight charge yes. trial form. Um, I would be fair to say at this, at this stage, the Sydney form has been quite dominant in Melbourne. It has. Um I didn't mind the trial. Um, those 700 trials at Randwick, they can be, in my personal opinion, they can be a little, not, I wouldn't say misleading, but then going to an 1100 metre race on debut, he's going to need to be strong. He's in the right camp, Gay Wadhouse and Adrian Bott. But I thought he was a little well found in the market, but I'm happy to be on stay focused. So you're, you're race two, number four. Mm, I'm race yes. two, number six, Trunk. So we're going up against yes. each other. <laughs> and you're keeping out of it. You're going to be neutral and head to Gawler. Yeah, I'm going to Gawler, race two, the toppy, blazing rebel. And so he goes over to South Australia. He brings Victorian staying form. He was okay in the Peninsula Cup first up, but then he stepped to 
1,800 metres at Caulfield second up. He got a beautiful ride, but he won dominantly. And then last start at Caulfield, it was a very fast run race over 2,000 metres, and he just got too far back. Jock got a little bit of a word from the stewards <laughs> saying maybe just use a little bit more vigour as well. So he claims down on the weekend. So in a race that's far easier on paper, he carries the same weight. So the Bright Oak Jenkins team flying, he crosses the border, and I think he brings the best form into the race. And, you know, you can get northwards of $4 against some horses that pretty much race each other every couple of weeks. He's the fresh blood on the scene, Blazing Rebel, the, the toppy in the second at Gawler. Looking forward to our early cash going up against each other and, of course, that tip from Dave at Gawler. We look at Geelong from races four and beyond. We've mentioned what a fantastic meeting it is and you're going to try and kick things off in race number five with Trapeze Wonder. Yeah, this is a really serious three-year-old race and I've got a lot of respect for the favourite here in Carbonados who made its debut in New Zealand and was impressive. There's been stakes winning form behind it. So I think he's a nice horse and there's been some chat that he couldn't end up being an Australian Guineas type. He's been purchased by New Connections, now with the Lindsay Park team. I just thought though first up at 1100 metres he might be a touch vulnerable. His trials have been sh very sharp and the horse that I want to back is, stay, uh, is uh, Trapeze Warrior. Stable mate to uh, stay focused. Um, he couldn't have been more impressive on debut at uh, Cranbourne a couple of weeks ago. And he was purchased for a lot of money as a yearling, this horse. I think they paid 900000 for him uh, by a trapeze artist. He's been trialling particularly well on a couple of occasions prior to his debut. And I think Barrier 1 again will be a big advantage for Trapeze Warrior on Saturday. Yeah, that, that favourite, Carbonados, if yep. this was a heavy track... Yep. It, it, You'd probably say it's no betting, at, at least based on what we've seen exposed. His win over 1,200 metres in New Zealand on a heavy track was unreal. Rated through the roof, he's jumped out well, but he is the known commodity trapeze warrior. He ran fast time at Cranbourne yep. on that good track as well. I sided with the favourite. It wasn't a race of, of any conviction. I wouldn't be surprised if he comes out that favourite and, and says... I'm a potential future star, but it's easy to see why you like the, the trapeze warrior. Yeah, and I'm just sort of looking at it. One's 220 now and the other one's yeah. sort of 450. I didn't think there was much between them. And for that reason, I'm sort of happy to have something on trapeze warrior. Having a couple of bets at Geelong yourself, you're in race number six and race number eight. Talk us through those. Yeah, Ray Magnerio, he's the best on the program at Geelong for me. So he's won four from six. So he's got plenty of upside. For the amount of talent he has, I know he's weighted accordingly because he's lightly raced and he's in 84 grade, but for the amount of talent he has, I think he's actually in quite well. Some mares give him weight at weight for age and he's win down the Flemington straight a couple back before he was freshened up was, was a beauty. He sort of came across when the inside was off and, and led them up and he actually added a new string to his bow because he'd been getting back in his races prior to that. He got back at sale under a big weight and nearly broke the track record. Absolutely ripping home with some good form in behind him. So two jump outs in that freshen up. One of them he beat a horse by the name of Shershov at the jump outs at Cranbourne. That horse holds the 9.55 yeah. record this really season. Well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, to be beating a speedster like that, seemingly in first or second gear at the jump outs, I think he's going super. And look, he's short enough given he's up in grade, but I think he's one that's going to be getting beyond benchmark 84 level where a few others like rich fortune in the race going going well enough she's, but she, i'm not I've, sure she's quite back to her best i've been a fan of that mare in the past mm. and i was disappointed with the run at flemington she got a bit keen i think that's the reason why they've put the earmuffs on her but oh, she's just doing a little bit too much wrong for my liking and i can see why you like yeah. ray magneria she there. loomed up down the straight yep. didn't she but then she peaked on the run i guess the katsu najem sahail it's good form for this but he's a good horse ray magneria best of the day for me yeah and a couple of bets you're both having in the coastal classic you can kick things off with uh, bermudez yeah i like bermudez now People say there's a, a query on him at 1,700 metres. He did win at 1,700 metres one day at the Warnable Carnival on a heavy track. He, he got one of the greatest runs in transit you'll ever see in the history of the world on a day where the fence was hot. But he's got some previous runs around the distance range that go OK. But I just want to believe what the data told me from last start at 1,400 metres, an open handicap of freshen up at Caulfield in a very fast run 1,400 metre race. He got back, hit the line the fastest last 200 metres of the day. So when you're coming through a fast race and you're strong at the end of it, you can expect he's going to be strong Yeah, I think he's, 1,700. I think he's one of the horses to beat. I didn't mind Holy Man's getting down in the weights, drawn an inside gate, can go forward. Probably tags Keats or yeah. looks to try and sit just in that position. He's and, the map horse. And that's where I've centred a lot of my betting around at Geelong. I think the last couple of meetings we've had when the rail's been back down towards the inside. And look, the natural layout of Geelong often favours horses on speed, but they 
sort of get a bit of momentum coming down the hill. I want to be horses closer to the rail, dry track. It's going to be nice and warm. I know, not expecting they're going to be making too much ground there on Saturday. Mm. Yeah, that, that point you make, uh, we're off the same setup as the last time it was yep. rail true. It was probably the most biased track yep. that we saw in Victoria for the year. Fence on. You'd like to think for a feature meet that, that have done something in the preparation to avoid that reoccurring, but naturally <laughs> you want to be up there. Well, I'm just going to default to it being yeah. favouring on speed, and if it happens to change, I'll sort of um, monitor my betting on the day. But um, I'm not going in wanting to back too many back markers at Geelong of late. Oh. Oh, OK, well, I'm having a couple of bets at Geelong as well. Um, in the latter two races, race nine, number two, Varvia uh, is one of the better bets on the card. I know that bz has got her as her sack later Ooh, on, but... Giving away all my secrets, <laughs> Lizzie. <laughs> well, don't worry, I've seen the rundown. <laughs> uh, but I think that her first up run warranted her being very hard to beat in this race. Her, her second up stats are good. She ran really good uh, sectionals. The race wasn't run to suit last time out at uh, Randwick, so I'm happy to be with her. And also Yellow Sam, I was with her first up. I thought that she ran well, but she still had a bit of improvement to come. And she ran really nicely second up last preparation, and I think she's another good Yeah, and the scratching of running by, who we'll touch on, uh, she's going to Sydney and running at Randwick, which was not a complete surprise when they drew barrier 13 and had the apprentice uh, booked for the ride. But that does open the race up for Yellow Sam, and she just had no luck at all last start, did she, Dave? No, no luck at all. And she was also first up no trial or jump out too, so she dropped in grade from a 78 back to a 70 and, and she'll get a nice run on the back of the speed but I'm with you with Varve. we're going to take on yeah. BZ I think it's <laughs> right. a good bet as well Varve. that's Second good up. I've got an I've got a disciple <laughs> that's great you can come back you can come back things have worked out between <laughs> Dave and uh, Lizzie after having a little bit of disagreement earlier <laughs> alright let's head to Gels on the shelf you haven't had this segment yet oh. Dave this is always I'm, the highlight of I'm the show I'm disappointed we haven't got any sort of vision of you in your elf outfits no I know next year definitely but we have got some vision of one of our other members at racing.com. We were watching the BBL recently and uh, this young man, well, this is the, the sort of catch we see to see from uh, maybe someone who is claiming this catch, BZ. Yeah, I'm not sure he did catch it, to be honest. No. Um, big red Tim Yates, man. Have a look at this. You can see him. He's spot him a mile away. There he is. He's, he's claimed that he's catched, he's caught it. I reckon if you look at the slow-mo, it's actually bounced and then he's sort of trying to be half a hero and say, look at me, Did proud catch. catch. Look, I, I don't want to mince my words here, but that behaviour is absolutely pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> there is absolutely no doubt it's hit the ground. He, he's claimed a catch. <laughs> if Michael Clark was nearby, he would have given him an absolute pasting for, <laughs> for claiming a catch that uh, wasn't there. Because he's got his hands on his head. Oh. It's like there he's is. a primary schooler <laughs> celebrating there. <laughs> you can see him pick him up. Uh, He's pretty happy, Big Red. Uh, yeah, it's uh, good to see. <laughs> Another thing that was good to see in South Australia recently was a recent meeting at Narracourt, and it sort of blends in between that Christmas and New Year period. A lot of people get out and enjoy themselves, like getting to the track and having a good time. But take a look at this uh, old mate um, having a little bit of a... A play down the outside. Now, he looks as though he's got an interesting sort of get up and then he tries to jump the fence. And, oh! So he, he was a social media sensation. These videos that were posted by Racing.com certainly got uh, plenty of views and no doubt... Um, he even got a hobby horse. He got horse. lucky missing the next fence. He, he could have gone nine eyes. Thankfully, he, he went next sort of over that fence yeah. and try and jump onto the track. The stewards were report will be interesting as yes, well. There's going to be a hearing. <laughs> yeah, he might have to trial again. <laughs> I think so, yeah. Hey, there was some interesting commentary recently. There's been a test <laughs> match going on between South Africa and India and former Indian coach and, and player Ravi Shastri. Well, he had an interesting assessment of a time measure <laughs> when India lost six for none. My goodness. Yes, 153 for four. 153 all out. If someone went round the corner for a dump and has come back, <laughs> India have been pulled out for 153. <laughs> oh, whatever they'd gone for. <laughs> they turned away from the game for a little bit. Wow, we. Oh my goodness. Do you know what? I reckon that's the sort of thing Simon Marshall might come up with. Yeah, well, don't give him too many ideas <laughs> because um, no doubt on his holiday he'll be sort of brewing his thoughts and wondering uh, what he can come up with in uh, 2024. Oh, but he... uh, saying you're going for a dump, yeah. I don't know if that's sort of top of the vocabulary for a lot of people. And there's a few things you've got to take in, like did you take your phone with you? Oh. Did you have a magazine? I think Matty Hill might have missed a trick in this year's Melbourne Cup and said, if you just went and took a dump without a fight, one. Oh, right. I think it's time for a break. I found another Simon Marshall. <laughs> 
Welcome back to Get On Extra. We're having a look forward to the Gold Coast tomorrow. $1.7 million in prize money on offer. This is a precursor, as we mentioned earlier on, to the Magic Millions race day, where there is bumper cash on offer in a week's time. And we're looking forward to seeing a few of the two-year-olds step out and really reaffirm themselves in the market. I'm going to kick things off with a two-year-old, BZ, and both of you would know this horse, Spywire. He comes out of uh, Ma Wild Magic Millions last time out. And... Fair to say, his performance. Yes. Look, it was a it was a good performance from him, but there was a bit of controversy behind the ride. I'm on the other side of the fence here. I'm not convinced the ride made a difference. I'm sort of thinking the horse was out on his feet because he didn't. Okay, yes, he probably could have been a little bit more aggressive, but I'm not totally convinced the ride cost the horse the race. He did get beaten a fair margin, and the other horse was coming a long way, but. Hopefully, he'll be ridden a little bit more aggressive to sort of put those doubts to bed on Saturday. What's well, your thoughts? He also pulled up late. Yeah. So he had an excuse in the veterinary report as well. So, so did the jockey have yeah, an excuse. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I reckon so. But he was good to start prior. He's clearly the one to beat on Saturday. He's got that race experience. He'll go for, and they'll want to tune him up to, to hopefully back up the week um, following. Yeah, look, I think... Look, I'm a little bit with you. I don't think he necessarily should have won the race, but it should, the margin should have been a lot closer than what it was. And I think on Saturday, as BZ mentioned, he's going to be ridden a lot more positively. He's going to definitely be able to... I think he's better than the opposition he's facing up against. And the thing is, you would just like to see riders punch them out to the line and then there's no question marks. Yeah. Like but I'm not ready to hang the rider for saying his ride costs the horse the race. Um, time will tell. Maybe he bounces back and he bolts in on Saturday and he bolts in next week and um, I've got a little bit more egg on my face. But I'm yeah not totally convinced the ride cost him the race. But I'm going to focus my betting on the maiden. Now, we mentioned... There's two maidens. Yeah, so I'm going to the 1400 maiden and this is a maiden that uh, you've got a fair bit of interest in. But I thought Dimitrov... I know he sort of half threw the race away last start, but I reckon he's perfectly suited here. Gets the blinkers on, gets Craig Williams. He's drawn out a little bit deep, yes. If the track happens to be slightly rain-affected, which it may be, I don't think it's going to be an issue for him. And uh, second up, blinkers on. I think this is a race he's been set for, and he, he looks very hard to beat. It's going to be fascinating how this track plays, isn't it? They've had this massive renovation. Yep. We know it was well documented last year that they had to... Well, the, the, we only had a little bit of rain on the race day, on the main race day, and they where it had to call the races off, but they've ripped the track up. Yep. It's a complete new renovation. What's the sort of feeling on how the track's going to play? Well, obviously the drainage that they've done and the work they've done it has really worked because I, I watched a track report um, yesterday on Thursday saying on, uh, I think it was Saturday, Sunday, Monday, they had 190 mils. Like, that's a, a genuine monsoon. <laughs> and on Thursday, it was a soft five. Now, they've had a little bit of rain overnight and, and there's been a downgrade, but I think the weather looks okay on the day. It's hard to say because it is that sort of new revamped surface, but often we've seen in the past when there is giving the ground at the Gold Coast, they get off the fence. Hmm. Yeah, I'd be keeping an open mind. From the meeting we had on the turf a couple of weeks ago there, it looked as though um, it had got the tick of approval from the riders and all concerned. So uh, it looks as though it's heading in the right direction and I think it has to be an improvement on how it was. Yeah. I will mention my horse as well, Naconium. He is in the same race. Yes. Um, he's he's a, a genuine top four chance. He's about $18 at the moment. Good luck. So. Fingers crossed for Lizzie and all the Race with Lizzie crew. Uh, you're also playing at the Gold Coast. Uh, race number seven is the race that you're in. Yeah, that's the wave. It's over 1,800 metres. And I like the vowels here. The blinkers go on. He was good at 1,600 metres. Last I'd hit the line quite well. The last time he, he raced in excess of 1,600 metres was actually over 2,000 metres at Group 3 level. Uh, he beat a horse by the name of Stroke of Luck, who, who we've seen run well in a Rose Hill Gold Cup. He won the Beaufort at Newcastle, so good form through that race. I just think blinkers on, up in distance, settling off the fence. He can hit the line really nicely, the Vows. And, and another one I'm having on the Gold Coast, Race 9, the toppy Baroque Road. Good performance first Huge. up at Lovely Ballarat. Form. Yeah, so a little deep was the stable mate who was really well supported, who was the noted wet tracker. Well, she's come out and subsequently won at Mooney Valley. And in the pre-race, Dave Eustace was saying, look, a little deep's a better chance. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if this guy runs well based on his jump outs, even though 1100 is short of his best. Well, if that's short of his best, then stepping up in distance on Saturday, he's going to be really well suited in the last. Let's have a look at uh, the Guineas next week. Uh, this is $3 million on offer. We've got Sydney Bowler and uh, Abounding, Sofrado, they're all at the $7, $8. It's a race where there isn't a horse that's really put its hand up quite at the moment. No, and a lot will be determined by the size of the field, the draws. 
how the track is on the day, who gets the best ride. I didn't think there was a huge edge, but Sydney Bowler has made sort of giant strides in the past couple of weeks for John O'Shea and looks to be quite progressive. I think it deserves to be one of the key chances in that race, Dave. Geez, it'll be an effort to yeah. win in its first preparation. Won three in a row, was good late over 1,300 metres last start. You yeah. think that'll perform well? I thought abounding when it won over 1,200 metres last start, the gold edition at Eagle Farm sort of took its time to get yeah. there, acted like 1,400 metres would suit. But as you saw from the market, that's anyone's business, yeah, that race. no dominant horse. Let's have a look at the two-year-old as well, another big purse on offer. Again, we're looking at horses like Highness, where we saw Spywire uh, was beaten by him in the Magic Millions three-year-old parkour. You saw how impressive he was. Then we've got Spywire in Arabian Summer, who are going to be running this weekend. And Stormboy looks as though he's the one to beat from what I've seen so far for Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Body goes forward and he should be very hard to beat. The other danger I thought was Park Owl, but Dave, did you have a firm opinion? Yeah, Parkour was good. Was good against the bias at Ballarat and then took that Formed a round week, but yeah, I was with you with um, Storm Boy. That that BJ McLaughlin win yep. just had no right to win. Now, yep. obviously, beat some horses that are level below him, but they they almost rode to beat him, and he was still too strong. Yeah, it's, it looks as though Gay Waterhouse is going to start her two-year-old feature campaign over the next few months uh, with a Magic Millions win. Let's have a look at our best bet sales. Where and Beezy, you found one at Werribee. Yeah, very keen on one at Werribee, and at the time of filming, there's uh, no markets up at this stage, but Cognac. Um, in mind as a debutante from the Denny O'Brien team who's been burning up the track in some recent trials at Werribee at Geelong. I'm expecting her to be well found by the market, but I think she'll be very, 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 very hard to beat on David. <laughs> right, OK. So, <laughs> so that is, that's probably one of our best bets of the weekend. Let's have a look at Drum Kit. Let's find our best place plays over the weekend. And I'm going to kick things off up at Randwick with Mom Felicity. I think she looks as though she's a genuine top three chance. So race nine, number 11, Mom Felicity. Busy. I'm going to Geelong, Polanco. Um, well, the... The ledger with this horse um, in my betting is uh, there's a lot of red there because I keep finding this all the horse all the time. But I back at the win. But if I'd been backing at the place, I'd be well in front. He loves running a place, and I think he'd be uh, in the money at least top three there tomorrow. BZ, CEO of Polanco's <laughs> Anonymous every time it comes up. Was unlucky last night. Geelong, the last, the lucky last race, 10 the 8. The Marg factor. The Gallagotas team have a good record at Geelong. Sheridan Clark on. This horse went to a new level at the end of last preparation. No first up form, but tuned up with a very fast thousand metre jump out at Pakenham. The only leader in the race. And for that reason alone, I think it's a good place. So I backed it to win as well. Oh, well, we're going to have, uh, we've only got three this week for our drum kit. So right. hopefully we'll be able to salute at home as we head to a break. On the other side, we're going to preview Randwick. Welcome back to Get On Extra. We're going to preview Randwick. They've got 10 races on the card. No feature racing this weekend. It's focused more at Geelong and up at the Gold Coast. But I'm going to kick things off with my better bet on the card. A really nice mare called Terra Mita. I know she's very short. She's drawn a little bit awkwardly, but I think that she's a mare that we're going to be talking about into the future. She's been very, very dominant her last couple, and uh, I'm happy to stick with her. Race four, number one. Yeah, she looks hard to beat. Nash Rilla in the saddle and uh, flying for the Austin stable. Uh, Running by Scratch from Geelong looks very well placed, Dave, going to uh, Randwick. I love this mare. I think she's got a lot of size, a lot of substance. She's still progressive. Um, I think she'll get to stakes grade and be highly competitive in a higher level. And um, what she did at Caulfield last start to win, she was able to get out of trouble at a key stage and still power to the post. I think she's a, a good bet and she deserves to be a short price favourite. Yeah, I'm with you. She's my best at Randwick. A long time dreaming road to beat her and she was still strong late in a fast 1400 metre race. You mentioned that she'll get to stakes grade and they're just placing her well on the way to stakes grade and picking up prize money on the way. I'm with you there. And I've got another bet at Randwick in the seventh, the eight, Exceladus. Joe Pride on the seven-day backup. Now, the favourite, Cool Jakey, also the stable mate, will go forward. But Denaustar goes forward. Felix Majestic goes forward. I think there's some good tempo. And on the seven-day backup, he just gets that lovely map to stalk them in behind the speed and, and close enough to double-figure odds. I think he's a good bet. Is Cool Jakey a bit of a wet tracker? Like, well, that was my concern with him being a little bit yeah, short in this he, race. He's done it on good tracks as well. He's in nice and light, but... I did note, I was a little bit concerned that on that wet track last night, he went out really hard and was still asked to get to the line, but was out 
w was home slow. So I wonder if it could have sapped a bit of energy from it. Yeah, I'm, I'll be having something on Battleton in that race, uh, yes. giving him a cheer. My old man's got a share in him and they think he's going quite well. Hopefully he will run there and may back up going to the Gold Coast the week after. We're both settled on the same horse. Yes. This horse is absolutely flying. That first up run was amazing. Legio 10. Yes, a horse that I've had a lot of time for since he's made his debut in Victoria and he's been travelling really, really well um, the past couple of starts. My only concern is if the track gets a little yes. bit leaderish with the rail out, but we'll know by race number eight at that stage. But if you can make ground, yeah, I think he's the one to beat. Yeah, the, that, that is my only concern as well. Tintuki would be the other horse that I would think could be hard to beat in that race, but I just absolutely love Legio 10's first up run. Let's have a look at Sunday session where we try and find uh, some bets for us. Yes. Where you're always kicking things off. I absolutely love a Sunday session, Lizzie, and I don't mind going down to the bull either. And I thought this um, filly, Rosa Juliet, was terrific on debut in a good race, running second to Namaska. Namaska's subsequently won again. Um, it's a quite a strong 1,400 metre maiden, but I think she's one to follow for Archie Alexander. I think she'll be very hard to beat. Well, I'll be hopping in my Skoda and driving down <laughs> to Warrnambool, salty Skoda, and I'll be trackside to see Active Duty take home the fourth. This guy backs up seven days after debuting last week, and I tell you what, he should have won the race. He got back, he was held up. He came home four to their one, up in distance, very hard Look, to beat. Look, and Lindsay Smith on his home track at Warrnambool, it's not a sort of... A thing that you see too often, no. trainers have a horse have a debut 1,400 and then back up seven days later straight to 1,700. But the way that it powered to the line, you think it's going to be very hard to beat and maybe could be a little bit closer from that inside drawer. Yeah, I reckon so. All right, well, you're going to clean up at Warnable and then Ooh. we're going to go to the EPL. Wow. And we're going to back uh, Tottenham to beat Man United, uh, who's lost a leg at the tail end of the season oh. in Ange We Trust. Well, go as Lizzie. we head to back sack and crack. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at our best bets for the weekend at the double figure odds. And I'm going to kick things off with Magneteer at the $11 race six, number eight. I reckon he, if he jumps, he's going to be very hard to beat. It's a long race three, number four. My mate Sonny for me goes forward. He's a dyed in the wool, good tracker. Form around him, good this preparation. I think Marble Arch is back. She won the uh, sports bet Future Stars series last year and she had an indifferent preparation last time in but her two jump outs at Flemington are outstanding. I think she's a great bet in race number nine. What are we sacking boys? I'm going against Varvia. Now I'm not totally convinced her wins from last preparation had a lot of substance. Yes she looks a key chance but at $3 I'm putting her in the bin. I'm hoping she loses. I don't reckon there's an easier horse to back against this weekend than LOU in the third at Geelong. At a maiden grade, skips a grade to 70 grade and was on that day at Geelong where the fence was an absolute conveyor belt. Uh, Mazita, I'm going against uh, this galloper for Lyle Chandler. I think that uh, Matt Dunn's uh, horse in the high well will be very hard to beat. Who is our best bet for the weekend? I will kick things off with exploring. I think will be very hard to beat. Race two, number five at Randwick. Ray Magnerio for me in the sixth at Geelong. Going to be very hard to beat. He's very <laughs> progressive, this fella. Very, very, very hard to beat. <laughs> well, I'm going with, uh, I'm hoping I might have a little bit of cognac in mind if we can get a uh, prize at Werribee. Race two. So I know all the focus will be at the Gold Coast and Geelong and all the glitzy meetings. <laughs> my focus will be at Werribee, oh. race number two. That'll just, make or break my week. Ju just a battler from the bush. I love it. Absolutely well, love talking it. of BZ, we don't have SD for our joke, so we thought we'd put the mantle on BZ. Okay, this is a fair bit of pressure here. It, um, massive. But I've gone to the trusted um, resource of Google and put in put terrible jokes, <laughs> and this is what has come up. Did you hear about the Italian chef who died? No. He passed away. Oh! Is that sort of <laughs> that's what I, that's the reaction I was looking for. Yeah. That is Not very bad. Simon Marshall esque. Not I was going to say it's, it's been great to be here right up until then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, BB. No. Look forward to the weekend and next good weekend. Luck. Yes, Listen. good luck Saturday. Yes, but next luck. weekend we head to the Gold Coast. So oh. join us. Are Thank we you. Going to the Gold Coast no, too? no, no. Just oh. me and SD. Come on. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.